We've got Marla, so I can see again, everyone's so on time today. It's wonderful. <laughs> um, right, so you're on mute at the moment, Marla. Let yep, me... I've just put myself off now. Can you wonderful. hear me? Wonderful. How are you? I am okay. Thank you very much Good. For, for, for having me on. Yeah, no, welcome. Thank you. So my name's Rachel. Um, I'm going to be hosting today. Um, are you going to be sharing your screen at all today? I am sharing my screen, yes. Okay, please. super. Do you want to give it a go just to make sure that we've all, we don't want any technical tease or anything like that going through, so that'd be great. Uh, give me just a minute. No worries. Okay. There we go. There we go. Yep, super. Brilliant. Okay, lovely. So, I mean, if you are happy to start today, are you, are you, have you, are you expecting anybody to join in the Zoom call from 1.30? No, super no, no, no. I'm quite happy to go now and uh, yeah, carry great. on. So, okay, no let problem. me introduce you. So next up, we've got Marla. So welcome. Um, today, you're going to be talking about why emotional intelligence is important in a tech world. So I'm going to hand over straight to you. Welcome. Thank you. I, uh, let me just start this. Okay. Hi, thank you all of you have, for having me on. Um, my name is Marla Ubi and I am the founder of Marla Investments. Um, I'm an entrepreneur and an investor in tech. I've worked in a range of industries. I've bought, sold and started a few businesses in the last 15 years each time exiting after growth and a substantial increase in the value of the business. Um, I now work with businesses who are looking for growth and value creation, but through changing their culture and focusing on their people. I work with leaders and their teams, making their needs and their emotional values integral and crucial to the process to maximize returns for all parties involved. So let's talk about emotional intelligence. What is it? The definition official of emotional intelligence is the ability to understand, use and manage your own emotions in positive ways to relieve stress, communicate effectively, empathize with others, overcome challenges, and diffuse conflict. You notice I said manage your own emotions. So what's the first aspect of emotional intelligence? Self-awareness. Now, this is the ability to detect, identify, and understand one's own emotions and their potential impact on the emotional state of other people. I don't know who here has watched the Pixar film Inside Out. I watched a film with my children and it really seemed to be aimed at adults. So for those who don't know, it's a film that, uh, that uh, shows how five basic emotions, that's joy, sadness, disgust, anger, and panic or fear, trace the growth and growing pains of a young girl and we see that the emotions get more complicated and interact with each other. To me, what it shows is that as we go through life, our experiences color the way we view things. And something that was once only joyful can start to create a more complex emotional response. Identifying and understanding our own complex and often really confusing emotions is the first step to self-awareness we need. And, you know, we don't have these wonderful cartoon characters in our heads explaining this to us. We have to figure it out all by ourselves. We also need self-regulation. Now, this is the ability to control one's feelings and impulses in order to prevent negatively disrupting the emotional state of others. You notice I said at the beginning, it was how we control our own emotions. Self-regulation is to control our own feelings to prevent negative 
emotions in others. But this ability also dictates how well a person can emotionally adapt to changing situations. So how many of you worked with people whose moods have you walking on eggshells? You know what I'm talking about. You don't know whether you're gonna find the good guy or the bad guy. And let's be honest, is that sometimes you? Do you find that you can't always control your own feelings? Now I'm going a bit to town on this one, but self-regulating your impulses can improve your ability to adapt your responses and emotions according to different situations, which means you can cope with change. Now this self-regulation skill can also make you more flexible when it comes to different views and opinions and allows you to consider issues from multiple perspectives. You know, training your mind and emotions means being able to calm yourself down when you're feeling stressed, anxious, or down. All these skills are really important in teamwork. Another important part of teamwork is socialization. Now, this is the ability to build rapport and maintain meaningful connections with other people. Now, the tech industry is notorious for the stories of those genius learners working in their bedrooms who go forth and create products that, you know, we didn't even know we wanted, let alone need it. So think Mark Zuckerberg, Jack Dorsey, and Bran Chesky. Now, Take Brian, for instance. We all kind of knew that it would be a good idea to have an Airbnb, but until Brian came along and created it, we didn't think we needed it. Now, we may have connected with the products emotionally, but have we connected with the people who made those products? And, you know, in tech, we seem to think that we don't need to because, you know, they, they're okay. You know, they're geniuses who sit in um, their bedrooms and create these products. Their only job is to create. Or is it? One of the biggest things we need in life is empathy. Now, this is the ability to determine and appropriately respond to other people's emotions. I really like to quote Chris Voss here. Um, for those who know, Chris Voss is an uh, ex-FBI uh, negotiator and the author of The Art of Negotiation. And negotiation is imperative in every aspect of our life. And this is what he says about empathy. The beauty of empathy is that it doesn't demand that you agree with the other person's ideas. You don't need to agree with somebody else. But you can start to understand what both parties need from a relationship, even a business relationship. So the last one is motivation. So motivation, or a person's drive, will, or morale, or enthusiasm to take or complete a particular action. You know, continuing to move forward towards your goals, regardless of external, internal struggles, is a conscious choice. Those who possess this skill tend to give 100% to stay aligned with their values and goals. They stay aligned with their values and goals. They don't give up. Persistence can also keep you focused on the positive impact within your control, while like letting go of situations outside your control. So focusing on the things you can do and not the ones you can't. So what does all of this have to do with the tech world? And how does it impact the tech world? 
So, you know, generally, the two words are not really used together. So this lovely picture of a building with colors coming out of it was drawn for me by a wonderful illustrator to show an emotionally intelligent business. But big tech has a big problem. Everyone in tech knows that we need better soft skills that help deliver technology more efficiently. And this begins with communication. First, within the walls of the organization, and then to outside customers. Now, for a technology company to grow, you must master both. And then you must train your people to become savvy communicators. But that's only a sliver of the picture. The need for emotional intelligence in an organization's culture is more pronounced than ever. Empathy is the ultimate relationship builder that drives existing customer relationships and serves as a catalyst for new conversations that drive sales for new customers and growth. Without empathy, technology on its own lacks a punch. Clients are more likely to leave a company when they feel that no one's listening to them. And it's called respect. In my last business, um, we had a um, software company who came to sell their product to us. Now, we thought it was a good product, but weren't completely sure. It was in very early stages. They told us it was in very early stages and we could see a lot of holes. So I told them that I needed to bring in more advisors. And they thought that that meant I would have to talk to my um, shareholders or senior stakeholders. Um, I brought in all the people who would be using this software uh, from the ground up. And they sat there with, with this company and pretty much ripped to shreds their software and told them why they wouldn't pay the money, why it wasn't worth it at the time and what they hadn't done and how they could not use it until this, this and that had not been put in. These people sat and listened. They didn't walk away. They weren't disgusted with us. They used every member of staff to build up their product. And not only did they build it up, they tested, they got our staff to test it. They created a product that was absolutely superb in the industry. And guess what? We didn't join them at entry level. We paid them full price for their product because they listened. We stayed. So how do you make sure that emotional intelligence filters down to every member of the organization? And how do you sustain that? And that's the important thing. The leaders may have emotional intelligence, but does it go right down? And how do you teach it? And how do you make sure everybody feels the same way? The empathy driven culture comes first, really quite simply. So here's a story. When uh, Satya Nadella took over Microsoft, he knew he needed to use empathy uh, to change the company's culture. There was bickering, infighting and a, and a really toxic culture brain. Now, several, several years later, Microsoft is back to its halcyon days of old. How did they do it? Now, Nadella was able to use empathy as a foundation for driving innovation at the tech giant. And in his own words, so I'm going to actually read this. He explains that the reason I talk about empathy is that I believe this is the leading indicator of success. Innovation comes only when you're able to meet unmet, 
unarticulated needs. And this comes from a deep sense of empathy we all have. You can't go to work and say, turn on the empathy button. Your life's experiences will give you that passion and understanding for a particular customer and a particular use case. So when you can link empathy to innovation, you have a win-win combination that will drive growth and create happy employees and customers. But you know, empathy is not just words. Leaders, all leaders. So this is the top of the organization, but also the team leaders right at the bottom really need to care. They need to care about what those at the cold face are confronting and how management can make it easier for them and empower them to do what most of them know is the best for, for that solution. You know, in almost 32 years of working, I found time and time again that some of the best answers for the hairiest solutions come from those who have to solve those problems. My number one solution, leave your ego at the door. The only answer you need is the correct one, not the from the correct person. So if you're going to create an empathy-driven culture, then understand exactly what that means. And that leads me to my next biggest learning. Practice psychological safety. Really big words, but hey. <laughs> What is it? Psychological safety is the freedom to be yourself and share ideas in the workplace without living in fear of retaliation or negative consequences. Emotionally intelligent tech companies understand that it's imperative to foster a culture that allows employees to think and act confidently. No one that allows them freedom of expression to be their best selves. They make the employees feel safe and they practice respect and empathy. I took over a company which had 100 employees. It was toxic. Every other employee distrusted every other one. No one really contributed to growth. They just came in to do a job, just a job. Our staff turnover was huge and I fired someone in my first week. Within three weeks, we had arranged a full staff meeting. What was really sad was half the staff hadn't even met each other. They didn't know the people they reported to. They didn't even know who each other's, their counterparts were. And it was so bad that if a manager from one site walked into the manager of a site, uh, uh, walked onto another site, that manager would throw an absolute fit and say, how dare they come onto my site? It was awful. So what did we do? One of the first things I got them all to do was stand up and talk about themselves, just give a little five minutes on who they were, what they did, and what they liked about the job. We then put post-it notes in front of everybody, green ones and red ones. On the green ones, everybody wrote three reasons why they would come to work. And on the red, three reasons why they wouldn't. And they put them all in an envelope that I still have to this day. We went away and created a value statement from that. It's a very simple thing. You would be nice to each other. Everybody has a voice. Everybody is important. Really simple things. But this value statement became part of their contract and they signed it as part of their contract. And I came across years later, somebody having an argument with another member of staff and saying, 
You're not living up to your values. It's my proudest moment. Absolutely my proudest moment. But by the time I sold that business earlier this year, people were working together. They were talking to each other. We had a business that went decreased in turnover, but increased in EBITDA by five, to, uh, five times. Now that does not happen because I'm doing something genius. It happens because everybody's on the same page. Laura Delizoni wrote in the Harvard Business Review, underlying every team's who did what confrontation are universal needs such as respect, competence, social status and autonomy. So recognizing these deeper needs needs a uh, deeper needs naturally elicits trust and promotes positive language and behaviors. You know, very rarely are there coincidences in businesses. Successful businesses have winning cultures built on trust and values that empower employees to be themselves. My last way that, um, uh, at this moment, that emotional intelligence can impact the tech world is put a human face to tech. So, Jan Schaefer, she's an executive director at JLab, said people's social and emotional intelligence have been impaired by the displacement of personal interaction with online interaction. So great tech leaders and organizations know that the human side of communication is vitally important. So reaching out directly for a phone conversation, video chat, or even an on-site visit helps to seal the deal for customer service. This is about delivering value to customers in a way that backs up and justifies what you represent during the sales process and in your marketing. You know, yes, you may have an incredible SaaS solution, and yes, it's making a huge difference for the customer. But how are you maintaining your professional relationship with the client? When they call, are you there to answer and help them? Or are you immediately ushering them to the user money? Or do you show that you care? Are they out of sight, out of mind? Are your people caring? Or are they showing them a user manual? Now, thinking of your customers as people and empathizing with them and valuing them will bring in the sales. But even more, empowering your people to make decisions, allowing them to follow the vision and help it along the way without red tape dogging their every step will bring in sales. Give them stringent standards and then let them Take your values, your company ethos, your company culture as their guiding principles and promote what you genuinely believe in. The culture you establish internally has a direct impact on how you treat your customers. Treat your people with class, respect and dignity, and you will value your customers that much more. Know where your bread is buttered and serve your clients with maximum ownership, efficiency, and benefit. So to summarize, if you're a tech company or not, struggling to keep customers or find new ones, you have to look at your culture, integrate emotional intelligence into the thoughts uh, and actions of the people you lead, and you will deliver the results and profits you desire. I want to say thank you. And if you're looking to bring emotional intelligence into your company, whether or not you're in tech, but are not sure where to start, you can get a copy of this PDF uh, form by contacting me. But I would also be delighted to talk to you uh, further about your challenges with growth and value and how I may be able to help you and your company. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marla. Really appreciate you joining us today. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm um, just going to try and stop that share.
Yeah. There, there we go. Thank you. So we might actually have a oh no, so Sheila, she's doing a little clap for you as well. In whether you I'm not sure if you can see that. Yeah. No. Oh super. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much.